Hi, in this session, I'll show you how to create a flowchart in Excel. If you're trying to create very fancy flowcharts, you're probably better off with Microsoft's other product, Visio. But if you have some simple flowcharts, Excel is actually probably a pretty good tool to create flowcharts. Now, for example, we have a flowchart that depicts a loop here, a make loop, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. This is pretty easily created in Excel. The other way that we can create a flowchart or another type of flowchart we can create is a swim lane. So we have our swim lane which charts the flow of a process between different functional teams, engineering, manufacturing, sales, and finance. So I'll show you how to create these type of flowcharts. So some things to keep in mind when creating our flowchart in Excel is first we want to lay out our worksheet correctly. Uh, that's the grid lines and the alignment. And then second is eventually kind of laying out the flow of our workflow. And then third is just formatting. So in terms of formatting, I'll show you a trick later on to make formatting a little bit easier when you're copying different formats for different shapes and you're trying to replicate that format throughout the rest of your shapes. So I'll show you how to do that near the end of the, the video here. So let's get started and see how we created this first flow here. This basically this simple uh, flow. Now what we need to do, when I mentioned before, is we need, we need to lay out our worksheet first. We want to make sure that uh, we have a grid. And so right now we don't really have a grid. It's more like a rectangular grid. What we need to do is we want to have a square grid. So what I want to do is make sure that the size of the each of these cells is one, one nice square. And so we're going to make the size of the column the same as the rows. So what we want to do is select the whole worksheet and just click on that icon down there, right click any of the columns and go into column width and then change the column width to 2.14. And click OK and what we now have is a nice square grid here. The second thing we want to do is change the alignment. So we're in the page layout ribbon, go to the arrange group and click under the align icon and make sure we have snap to grid and snap to shape selected. You can see now it's selected. If I select that, it unselects it. So I'm going to go ahead and select it again. Now the difference, and also select snap to shape. Let me go ahead and go over, hover over it and kind of tell you the difference between snap to grid and snap to shape. Snap to grid, basically what, what it does is when you put shapes onto the worksheet and you move it around, it will snap to each of the grids. What happens if you don't have snap to grid on is the movement of the, sh of the shape on the grid, it's kind of smooth and it doesn't really snap to the grid easily but with snap, snap to grid it will and snap to shape just basically snaps the shape into each other so when you move shapes around they kind of align to each other's lines a little bit more easily. I'll show you what that means here. Uh, let me go ahead and go insert and just let me, let me insert a shape, just any old shape here. So I have this rectangle here. If I move it around you can you notice that it kind of snaps to the grid. If I didn't have that and then go and turn it off here. If I didn't have snap to grid and I move the shape around, you can see how smoothly it moves around. It doesn't really snap to the grid. I have to kind of really gently kind of move it to kind of make sure that it aligns the grid. But we don't want that. We want to have it snap to grid. And with snap to shape, let me go ahead and control D to duplicate that. Make sure I have snap to grid turned off. So if I don't have snap to I'm, shape turned on. Let me also turn off snap to grid. If I don't have snap to shape turned on, you can see that it's smooth, but then it doesn't really snap to, if I want to make them adjacent next to each other, it doesn't really do it that easily. If I turn snap to shape on, you notice if I kind of move it around, it kind of like pops it into the shape adjacently. It, it kind of like moves it into it a little bit more easier than if you didn't have snap to shape turned on. So I'm going to turn on both of them right now. So they're both turned on, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete these shapes and go into creating that little loop here. So let's see how we create this little workflow. I'm going to go ahead and insert a circle here under basic shapes. Let me go ahead and draw this. Well, maybe I'll just insert an oval here and I will format it and put in a text here. I just click inside and just type, I'll just type step one and then right click, format shape, 
And what I'm going to do is adjust the text alignment. So this text box inside the shape, I'm going to have a vertical alignment, middle centered. So it kind of centers everything. So if this is the the end product of what I want my shape to look like. I want it to have be blue with a like a bow type of outline, a little strong outline, and a white colored font text in there. And I want that the same. Now all I need to do is replicate that, and I can just do that by pressing Control D to duplicate it. So I'm just gonna have four ovals here, two, three, four, and that will be my basic loop here. So I'm gonna move this over here and kind of line this up here. All right. So the second thing I want to do now is I want to create that impression of a flow, and that's going to be done with arrows. So I'm going to insert some lines. I'm going to insert curvy lines, this curved arrow line. And so what we want to do is make sure when we select that, we want to hover over our shape and make sure these markers show up. So this is the begin marker and the target marker. I want to make sure that the target marker on the next shape is selected too. And once that's selected, you let go of the mouse button, you'll notice that there are two red dots that indicates that now the shapes are connected with that line connector. So if I move my shape around, the line moves with it. Let me do control Z to undo that. If I didn't have this as connected to the shape, if I just kind of thought I did, you would see that one connector is connected to the shape, but the other one isn't because that, that marker is white color instead of being red. So if I move the shape around, the line would not move with it. Let me control Z to undo it. So you want to make sure that when you're connecting your shapes, you're connecting it with the marker, and that's indicated by the two red dots here. So what I can do now is I can just, since I've selected a shape, we have our format contextual ribbon show up. If I click outside of it, you can see that it disappeared. And um, you can you can insert your shape by going to the insert ribbon here, but if I'm already if I've already selected a shape here, you'll see we have our drawing tools and a format contextual icon show up here. I can just select here in the insert shapes group for another curved arrow, select it, the shape, make sure one of the red markers show up, and my target here will make sure it goes to one of the red markers. And I can see it's red here, red here. The other way to do it, if I'm just creating a curved arrow, if this is selected already, I'll just press Control D to duplicate that and move this one over here and move the arrow head over here to the next shape here and Control D the same thing and even though it's out of here I can just move it over here so instead of like trying to select from the interest shapes here I can just duplicate one of the arrows already found so this is our basic flow and if I don't want the grid lines to show up anywhere I can just go under view and uncheck that grid lines and we have our nice flow here so how do we create the next example this swim lane so it's basically a little bit, a little bit more involved but essentially the same idea what we want to do is make sure that our grid line is set up so I'm going to select that here right click one of the columns under column width change that to 2.14 click OK I have my squares here ensure under page layout that the alignment is the snap to grid and snap to shape is selected so what I want to do now is I want to draw some of the shapes so I'm going to have I'm going to have a under the flow chart I'll have a terminator usually that's the beginning or end of a process I'm going to make this uh, let's just make this four, four, four cells wide and two cells deep and let me go ahead and just adjust the color here I'd make it something different and then I'll just uh, I typed inside type start and then I'll go ahead and right click under format shape to adjust the text box and make that vertical alignment middle centered. So if that's the way I wanted it, I can just press control D. Oops, select that, press control D, and then I have my end. I'm gonna type end here. And so usually in flowcharts you have usually you have a a, a terminator a shape. Usually one is start and one is end. That one's probably a little too far out. So the next shape I want to add, let me click on here, since I've got this select it my drawing tools contextual icon showed up I'm just gonna go under here and select a rectangle flow and this is basically a process and this will also be a four wide and two deep this I'll call this one step one 
and then uh, I'm going to go and right click that go into format shape and make sure the text box is vertical alignment for middle centered and cl click close and I'm going to make a couple copies of this I, I think I'm going to keep with this blue color and I'm just going to press control D to make some duplicate copies of that maybe uh, one more and kind of move them out so I can adjust the text here so that's step one this could be step two uh, this will be step three let me go and click in there and this is step four Oops, step four and this is step five so this now I'm creating my flows and I think this I'm gonna put this over here I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to assume that maybe I'll just have three functional groups instead of the... How many do I have here? Instead of having four, I'll just put make three functional groups. And let's see. Let me make... Maybe I'll make the... I'll make this about uh, seven. Let's see. Six, seven cells wide. Let's make it eight, eight cells wide. And I'll call this out and I'll merge and center this. And do the same here. Two, four, six, eight, merge and center. Two, four, six, eight, merge and center here. So I'll just call this functional group one, functional one, and then uh, just copy that, paste here, control C to copy, control V to paste, and I'll just change this to two. And I'll change this to two. Alright, so now I have the beginnings of a swim lane. What I want to do is create these borders now. So I'm going to select this set of columns and under the font group for the borders, I'm going to select the outside border. So it's going to create a border. Basically, it's going to create a border, a rectangle border here. Click on that. So we have our border here. Do the same here. I'm going to click the border there. Select these columns and click on that. Now we have our borders here. So now I can just kind of adjust my flows. So let's pretend that step one and step two belongs to function one and then step three belongs to function two. Step three and four belong to function two. Let me go ahead and click that. And step five belongs to function oops, function three here. Step 5 belongs to function 3, and also the end belongs to function 3. Let me move this down here. So you, you notice how that kind of snaps to grid, right? So the next thing I can do now is put in my arrows. So I'm going to go into insert, put in my arrows. So this is more linear, so I'm going to put in kind of straight arrows. So again, select, make sure that I select my markers here so I can go ahead and select the arrow again or I can just press select the arrow and press control D to duplicate and just move these down to the appropriate markers on each of the shapes that goes there uh, control D and move this over here and move this over here and then control D there's another copy of that and move this over here and move this down here control D and then move this here and make see this is white white color so if I move the shape this arrow is not going to move with it can control Z to undo that so let me go move this over here and then control D to so copy that arrow move that here and move this here All right whoops that one didn't seem to align up pretty well let's see how no see let me line it up again Let's see how this lined up. Maybe this shape didn't line up too well. Or this particular shape is not there. Okay, so now this is lined up pretty well. Let's say, for example, that we lost this step. We did this step didn't occur anymore. So this is this is where we do a little bit of adjusting and kind of understand how it works. So let's say that that step got deleted. We select that and press delete. And it would be kind of a pain to manually move these up here. The beauty of 
creating a flowchart in Excel is you can just kind of remove so we can select a couple cells here I think we want to shift these cells and also these cells up so I'm just gonna click make sure that I'm kind of above here and right click go and click select delete and select the shift cells up radio button click OK and what you've done is basically move the cells above them above these areas up and so I think I probably need to move it a little bit more let me select this range of rows right click delete and just move shift cells up alright so I didn't have to do it one by one I can delete this arrow now and I want to make sure that these arrows uh, match up right and they're red they align to it right and so that's the way that you can move cells around excuse me move shapes around not one by one but as a group so you have to kind of delete some range of cells and kind of move them around that way uh, you can also probably move them closer that way too if you want to delete some cells so let's say that we want to add step three back in there so basically it's be the opposite of removing cells you're basically inserting cells so we have to make sure that we're selecting a range that fits within the areas or the confines of these shapes and also one row will not cut it so we don't need to probably add about five rows so let me see how that works so it's going to be a little bit of trial and error so I'm going to select that range so it's going to be that that many cells wide and I probably want to shift it down about five cells after I selected that range of cells right click and go under insert and I want to make sure that the shift cells down radio button selected click OK and now I've done now it's shifted the whole bunch of cells down all in a group I can just select one of these shapes press control D and maybe put in back a step and make that call that step three right and then just select one of the arrows control D to duplicate that and I have back my step three between step four and five uh, between step two and three so that's the other way to do it to clean this up a little bit more you might want to get rid of these grid lines go under view and uncheck that now we have our swim lane oh I forgot to uh, make this border a little bit more pronounced so I can click on there and just click the outside borders there and so now I have a swim lane so that's how you create a swim lane flow chart now I also mentioned before what if you wanted to change the formatting of one of the boxes uh, do you have to do it manually one by one for each of the other ones well really no what we can do is I can select let me just, let me start with one first maybe I want to make this bold I want to make this color and go into format I want to make this mm, purple instead so after I selected that I can actually just select the shape go under the home ribbon click the format painter probably click it twice if I click it one time after clicking it once and I select another shape it's going to apply it but that it's going to disappear so I have to go back and click it again and do that but if I wanted to do it repeatedly what I can do is double click it click it twice and you can see now it's it's selected so after I selected the format painter and double clicked it now I can click on any shapes afterwards to apply that formatting now to turn it off I have to click it to turn it off so that's an easier way to apply the format to different shapes without to doing it one by one so that's the format painter a little, a little neat trick there so there you go there's how to create a flowchart in Excel if you're gonna create complicated flowcharts better use Visio but if you've got some simple flows Excel is a nice handy tool to do that. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.